The English word for the discipline, folklore, was actually coined in 1846, which makes it, interestingly, the very same age as University College Cork. It's the same age, I could say, as, as the buildings itself, but the idea is also the same age. The idea itself originally goes back to the middle of the 19th century, and it refers to such things as, as popular antiquities, songs, buildings, beliefs, traditions. However, the discipline has only come into the modern university system in Ireland since the 1970s, it's fair to say. And it's since the 1970s that this department, which is one of two departments in Ireland that studies folklore, the department here in University College Cork was begun in the late 1970s as well, uh, within the Department of History. And over the decades following that, eventually it emerged as an independent department with its own research and teaching and modules and so on and so forth. Here we look at all aspects of traditional and popular culture. We look at belief systems, for instance. We look at how people construct those, whether they're religious or secular. How people would go to holy wells what customs would they observe at patterns, what relics would they leave, what wishes would they make. Uh, we look at all these aspects. Students get the opportunity to interact with our urban research centre, the Cork Folklore Project. They search the archives for material for their own work, but they also contribute to projects such as our current interactive mapping project, the Cork Memory Map. The Irish folklorist and ethnologist Cuivin O'Donoghue once uh, defined folklore as the doings and sayings of the common people. And of course within these sayings we would have a broad variety or a wide variety of vernacular narrative, including lengthy fairy tales and other folk tales, and of course our native Irish hero tales, including tales from both the Finn and the Ulster cycles. Other genres that we study include legends and personal experience narratives or memorettes, riddles, jokes and all kinds of verbal art. While interested in the past, we're also very interested in storytelling in the present, as evidenced by our research into urban legends, for instance, and our involvement with the online project, the Cork Memory Map. Folklore itself is, a, is an unusual discipline in that it is one of the only, if it isn't the only one, that actually studies people's ordinary everyday life uh, from within the home, from the material culture, uh, moving along to people's beliefs, celebrations, festivals, rituals, people's belief, whether that be uh, associated with formal religious belief and practice or with informal religious belief and practice, uh, as was commonly a held notion from the 19th century about survivals and evolution and superstitions. Folklore is one of the only disciplines that actually makes these the object of, the, of their research, whereas others may be looking at global movements or massive historical movements and ideological movements. Uh, folklore that, you know, one, one, one French historian remarked interestingly that in the height of the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte, that uh, there were people in France who had never heard of Napoleon. So, you know, we, we have interesting uh, instances of, of, of this lack of awareness, if you like, of people's everyday life. So from the 19th, for the last 200 years, you could say, uh, folklore has been strengthening itself as a discipline that is, that is fit and equipped to study everyday life in, in a serious, in a very serious manner. Uh, everyday life, popular culture, traditions, customs, pastimes, the annual cycle, the main festivals that were pertaining in popular culture, uh, the main rituals in the life cycle, such as uh, like like as on the government offices, the births, deaths and marriages, uh, all of these customs and that help us to understand how people perceive the world and how people perceive uh, time and the cosmos and human life itself and the matters that were important uh, to ordinary people. I teach a course on blues and Irish traditional music, for instance. I look at musical traditions in their cultural contexts. I bring in aspects of ethnomusicology without necessarily focusing on the musical aspect specifically, but rather on how people use music to express a sense of community, to express a sense of identity, how it relates to their history, 
to the two aspects of oral history even. The quality of research carried out within the department has been acknowledged in various ways over the years, from the pioneering work of one of the founders of the department, Professor Garrod O'Crowley, to Dr. O'Kailas and Tlatfe Loige, a work which won the first prize in the Arachtas Literary Competition in 2010. Uh, we also publish a folklore journal, Beskna. It is one of only two academic journals in the Republic of Ireland that publishes exclusively articles and reviews relating to folklore and ethnology. We're extremely proud of the advances the journal has made uh, over the last number of years and we are very welcoming of postgraduate students that might like to get involved in the process. It was in the 1970s that the discipline of folklore entered into the Irish university system in University College Dublin in 1971 and just a few years later here in University College Cork where we offer two different subjects, one through the English language and one in the Irish language. Around the same time, interestingly, in the 1970s, a whole range of ideas started to drift from other disciplines into the discipline of folklore from, for example, social and cultural anthropology from cultural studies, from all sorts of other interesting disciplines who, who kind of reinvigorated, if you like, and re-energised the discipline of folklore here in University College Cork and opened up a whole new range of, of interests for students of, of folklore. Folklore is an ideal subject in terms of uh, its interdisciplinary nature in the sense that it covers an encyclopedic range of topics in actual fact and those go back into the past. You might be interested in rituals and customs in the 18th century, in the 19th century for example. You may be interested in rituals, festivals, customs or belief in the present time itself in either an urban or a rural, rural situation or in cities or, or, or globally as well because it, it folklore sits very neatly into the range of interests into indigenous cultures, native cultures, popular culture, spreads into the social science interest in, in folklore and ethnology and across into social anthropology as well. We actually have on the campus uh, our own piece of folklore associated with the with the old part of the university where the university's crest is set on the on the ground in tiles and there is a, a kind of a, a superstition or a taboo at least amongst students that they shouldn't step on the university crest itself until such time as they've been awarded their degree or there could be a sort of a taboo associated with it that perhaps they could even fail to, to progress in their examinations at the end of the academic year. <laughs>